What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Wheel 59. Today's episode, we are going to be picking up the block slash motor for the fair lane. So I'm pretty stoked. It's 7.31 p.m. on a Thursday night. And yeah, we're going, taking a little 30 to 45 minute drive and go picking up a 302. So if you saw my last video, um, I said my coworker possibly had a 302. That deal kind of fell through. No biggie. Um, so I found this one off Marketplace. Super stoked to get it. My coworkers was a 1968 block. So it did not have, the lifter bores were not big enough for roller lifters. It was a uh, flat tappet lifters at the time. So the block I'm looking at is a roller block. So if I do want to run roller lifters, which I'm planning on doing, it just direct replacement, direct fitment. So that's a big plus because I don't have to take the block to the machine shop and get the lifter bores machined out. So that's also, I'm really excited to get this motor. So yeah, hopefully all goes well. I'll keep y'all updated. All right, quick trip. Um, I would say went pretty well. Got the motor, got it for a little less than I expected too. So even better. I'll update y'all when I get to the house. It's the next day and I was diving this motor. And let me tell you all about this motor. So this is a Ford 302 uh, roller block. Um, came out of a mid nineties Mustang. As you can see right here, and see a little better right there it does have a truck oil pan on it so which i have a, i have a mild and or a milliden however you say it oil pan so i'm gonna ditch that truck oil pan but uh didn't come with the cam no worries i'm gonna put a different cam in it anyway uh crank connecting rods are in it obviously all eight pistons this one is just the number one piston and it's out for some reason so but the, the cylinder number one is the only kind of bad cylinder. It just has a little nick right there, a little scratch. Your fingernail barely gets caught. So this should be able to bore out. Um, I'm going to take it to the machine shop and get it dipped and honed and bored out anyway. So, And while they're there, they're going to do uh, cam bearings and freeze plugs. But the freeze plugs already look like they've been replaced before. Um it don't look too terribly bad. So I may not have to do freeze plugs, but yeah, not too bad for 60 bucks. Can't really complain. But on this piston right here, you can kind of see the contact it had with the cylinder wall yeah, right there. So that's a little, that's a little bit of an oof, but oh well. Just get a board out and get some different pistons and we should be good to go. Connecting rods look to be in pretty good shape that I, I, I that I've seen. So once I tear it apart, this symbol it'll get a better uh look at everything. But yeah. Also, as you can tell, it's missing a front timing cover. But we have a spare one from blue that had a broken bolt in it, so I may try to get the bolt out and maybe rescue that timing cover but if not i'll just get a new one i'm not really worried about it i stopped by tractor supply this morning and got a bolt to go right there so i can actually turn the motor thread the full thread in yeah there we go so sweet so i'm gonna get the engine hoist and try to get this motor out of the bed of the truck with the engine hoist then just kind of roll it in the shop and put it on an engine stand. So I don't know exactly where I'm going to kind of hoist it up from since there's only three studs, three head studs, and they're all on the second bank. So, but I'll figure it out. Got the 302 in the bed of uh, Cherry. Had to use my dad's truck for something. So it's sitting in the bed of Cherry right now. Uh, got some hardware for the chain for the engine hoist. Just going to put some bolts right where the head bolts would go so got that then i got some hardware for, for the back of the motor um took them out up to the uh, engine stand so looking pretty good just gotta get the engine hoist over here then uh let this motor out of the truck but while i'm here i did notice see this little lip right there nothing too concerning just because it is still kind of stock bores. All this can be fixed, but you know my dad's suspicion is this guy kind of ran boost at one point because it doesn't go all the way at the top. So 
which is very interesting because these are OEM cast pistons. As you can see, the, where is it? Where's the light? Uh, I can't really, I don't even see this. I see some letters right there. I don't believe those are forward casting numbers. I thought there's a Ford emblem. Oh, yeah, right there. Right there. So, yeah, these are OEM pistons. I don't really know who would run boost with OEM pistons. So, that's kind of dumb if you ask me, but yeah. Nothing that a machine shop can't fix. Got the chain on. Sorry for the noise. It's super windy here. But got the chain on. Now I'm gonna just put this on right there, like so. Then lift it up a little bit, move it that way, or pull the truck forward. Then bring the engine stand over there, put it on the engine stand, then roll the engine stand into the garage so it's not windy and we can actually video it and start tearing apart. Got it lowered and kind of even with the engine stand. Now to just zip the bolts in. All right, we are all good. Now let's get the chain off and roll the motor inside. I got the motor in the shop. Now let's turn her over and take the oil pan off and start kind of seeing what the bottom would look like. I'm looking at this oil pan and like I said, I, I'm like 99% sure this is a truck oil pan because I, I believe all the car oil pans are kind of flat right here. Then the sump is right here towards the front of the motor. At least that's what I've seen. But I haven't really worked on any mid 90s Mustang, so I'm not 100% sure. But going by that oil pan, it looks like it's a truck oil pan. And I'm not, I don't know if it's 4302 or not because the timing covered that we did on the 302 on blue, it didn't have two bolt holes. I believe it only had one in on the bottom. So here's a timing cover. Oh, there was two. Never mind. Just scratch what I just said. All right. So I'm going to... Dig deep and take off this oil pan, all right? Uh, it's three eighths all the way around. So, yeah, I don't know how far we'll get into this video, disassembling it. I may make a whole different video of actually going in deep, but we'll see how long this thing gets. I'm also probably not gonna keep these. I mean, I may keep them for spares, but I'm not gonna reuse them because I have a whole uh, set of oil pan bolts that we were going to use on that motor for blue, but we never did. So. The Casper the Ghost. Mmm. Smells like some burnt oil. Love that smell of burnt oil. Turns pretty easy. When you saw the pistons, they're going up. They're reaching top of the center. Not too bad. Looking at it, it's not terrible. Definitely could be worse, but that cylinder, cylinder number uno, has probably the worst damage. You can kind of see right there. A little focus. Oh, down. Come on. All right. I don't know if you can see that. Just will focus. There you go. All right. So, yeah, that's probably the, that's the most damage. It's not, like, deep or anything. It's just, it definitely needs a good bore and hone. That's for sure. But that right there is the same cylinder that had that piston 
that piston came out with all the scratches on the side. So, yeah, machine's a good bore. But it turns pretty, turns pretty easy. Let me move that. Focus. There we go. It turns real easy. Could be a whole lot worse. He's probably loose because pickup tube is right there and such. Yeah, not too shabby. Uh, the can the crank journals look pretty pretty good. Not too bad. Pretty smooth. Definitely got hot, real hot. So at one point. So either he lack of lubrication, you can just tell about all the discoloring, or. Forgot to do oil change, but yeah, not too shabby, man. Not too shabby. As I'm looking over this, I'm not seeing any cracks. It's a hair. That, yeah, that's a hair. I'm not seeing any cracks, which is good. That's probably just a hot spot or something. Little. Nick's right there, but I see those little marks, those little casting marks right here. I can't tell if those are casting marks or if those are caused by somebody. I'll take a look at old photos of, of the 302 in blue, but I don't, I'm not seeing any cracks, which is good. <laughs> you don't want any cracks. I think we're looking pretty solid right now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, stay tuned for the next video. I know I said that I may disassemble the, the whole motor in this video, but I don't want it to be a 25-minute video because I really want to dive deep into it. So that's why I'm going to make a part two. But really stoked on the motor so far. It's looking pretty solid. Want to take the crank out and actually get to see all the journals and all that and take all the connecting rods and pistons. I'll see a little more of kind of the conditions that it's in but so far looking pretty good cylinder one's the only kind of iffy part but if it's stock bore it'll probably bore out i'm i'm not really too worried about it but thank you all so much for watching um make sure to leave a comment like subscribe all that jazz because you don't want to miss this amazing content right so on that note i'll see you on the next episode thank you for watching